get to purchase things earlier than anybody else. I mean, it's kind of like a subscription, but you're not just going to be automatically getting it something every month. Um, but, like I said, you'll be notified when things are going to be happening, and you're going to get early access, you're going to get discounts, depending on what level you join up. So, depending on how popular it gets, we might be able to do a subscription. Right now, it's kind of a, you know, kind of a niche item, so I think a, a new monthly newsletter and the fan club is probably about as close as we're going to get to a subscription right now. We, we don't really release product regularly enough for it to make sense, I don't think. You know, with Mattel doing a subscription, you've got a nice monthly rollout. Um, for us, we base a lot around the conventions and, and special events like that. So, to, you know, to charge people for a subscription where you may go for four or five months without an item doesn't really seem like a fair approach. So that's why the Power or the uh, Power Lords Fan Club is kind of, a, for us, it's a nice in-between. And thanks for anybody that, that got some of those soldiers yesterday. Thank you. They went quick. That was, that was pretty cool to yeah, see. Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. For those of you who did get them, and if anybody wanted any of the Power Soldiers that we sold out of at the booth yesterday, um, they will be on storehorseman.com tomorrow afternoon. Uh, we're going to put on our Facebook page and on Source Horseman in, tomorrow morning what time they're going to be released. And we're going to have it go up at exactly that time, Eastern Standard Time. I, I hear you snickering. Don't snicker. I will, I'll, I'll make sure it goes up on time. And uh, we've only got 125 of each. So they will go fast. So if you want them, keep an eye out on SourceHorseman.com and the Four Horsemen Facebook page. Find out what time they're going to be there and be there early and get on it because I think they're going to blow out really quick. We had a, a lot more success with those ones yesterday than we thought we were ever going to have. Or you can just email me and I'll cast you up a prototype. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. <laughs> that was a joke. That was. <laughs> Yeah, I, I got two, and I'll try to make them real quick. Um, for your guys' original property, 17 and... Nick, I don't think you're going to be capable of that. I, I know I'm not, but I'm going to do my best. Um, for your original property, 17 and got Metropolis, have you guys ever been approached by, or alternately, have you approached anybody about doing separate media? Uh, comics, uh, web series, that kind of thing, to kind of promote it a little bit more? Because that stuff's awesome, and I'd Thank love you. to see it on TV or in a comic or on a video screen or whatever. Can you, can you see the collective frustration on everybody's faces? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sorry, I did not mean to frustrate you. No, we, no, we, no. we have both approached and been approached, and so far things are, uh, nothing has happened. The and right thing hasn't happened yeah, yet. Yeah, the right thing hasn't yeah. happened yet. Yeah. It will. We're working on it. It's, that, that's a very uphill climb. Like, I mean, we've been trying in some form or another for at least 10 years now on, on various different properties and we've gotten close on some some things we've tried to, to do more on our own um, you know for, it's a number of factors money is a factor because even to get it to the point where you can pitch it properly it takes a lot of money to do it and, and more importantly it takes a lot of time to do it right and so for us, you know, we have our our day to day work, which is Mattel, Masters, DC, what have you, and that is really what pays the bills and allows us to do this other type of <coughs> of creative ventures. And then when it comes to that stuff, it's also a matter of taking the time to make those figures, because I mean that's what we do. We, you know, we're, we're toy makers. So to get into some of this other stuff you know, with like script writing and creating pitch art and, and all of that, um, it's it's tough to justify spending all that time on doing that and, and not making, you know, A, the Mattel toys, and then, you know, B, the Four Horsemen toys. Yeah, making action figures is kind of what we do, and we're trying to do other things to help promote ourselves. But if you guys know any wealthy investors that would like to help out, send them our way. <laughs> and there's so many other characters in that seventh that that haven't been seen by the public and Eric has created this universe of unbelievable characters and a story that is that is so cool and there's so much depth to it. It's been 
I, I just want, I hope it gets to be seen by everybody someday because it's prepared for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's got to be right, though. Yeah. You know, you just, it, it, part of it, too, you know, it, it, we're torn as well because, you know, we've, you know, you put all this work into the Seventh Kingdom in particular. We have done a lot of, uh, of treatment as far as setting it up for an animated series. And, you know, we're 40 something characters in. There's, I think, you know, close to 50 pages of artwork for it. The problem is, you know, on the one hand, we could put it all up online or get it out to the fans, but then we're also concerned if you put too much out there, there's nothing left for, you know, if you're, you're pitching it to a, for a show or a movie or what have you. That, um, You've put too much out there, and there's, you know, there's there's nothing left to, to really reveal to the fans, and uh, the mystery's gone. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's just kind of like dating. dating. <laughs> so I'm in I'm in a little bit of a unique position because you because don't date. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> because you don't date. I don't date. I'm married. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a huge fan, and, and these guys are being very modest. Um, I, I'm a big fan, but then I've also been brought in a little bit onto the inside. And I, the only thing I want to emphasize here that these guys probably won't tell you, it's the next Star Wars, it's the next Lord of the Rings, it's the next Masters of the Universe. It is that big, it's that epic, it's that deep, and I mean, that's nice. You've got the next George Lucas and the next J.R. Tolkien basically sitting right here. And that's something like that. I, I can quote it with my opinion, but it's um, it's very true. And it's Eric's right with the whole frustration. It's frustrating. Oh, Nate, Nate, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you we left that blank check back at the studio. I'll get it to you later. Right. And it, it, how long, how long have you been working on that storyline, Eric, creating? Like, when did that first happen? What year did Zeke do? 2006? Yeah, it was before that. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, it had to have been since at least probably 2004 or 2005. Just, you know, working on it little bits at a time. Yeah. So that's, that's a very long answer. That's <laughs> <laughs> your question. It's a ten-year process. We were actually discussing this on Friday. Multibot, we were looking at some possibilities of reusing some other parts from other Masters characters, but for the most part, that's going to be almost 100% new tool figure. But I think as far if it as ever happens. Like play pattern and, and construction, um, by doing Modulock first, a lot of the, the, you know, the play pattern and the, the breakdown has been figured out. I mean, of course, there would be some variation when we get to the multibot, but, you know, I think a lot of the, at least the, you know, the, the planning part of it has been taken care of now. Chuck? On that topic, uh, you mentioned uh, multibot being 100% tool. Uh, Nearly. Not 100%, but close. Nearly. Did you consider maybe looking at, like, um, some fudging with like a uh, uh, weapons tronic or or that new adventure character that was like an arm. Uh, I forget the damn name. <laughs> huh? No, it's the robot one. He's got like a tank for a head and gun for arms. Yeah, it's new adventure stuff, so, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I obviously, uh, you know, as Scott has has mentioned several times. Uh, Getting the, the vintage figures taken taken care of from the various lines is first and foremost. Uh, if you could, if there's something that could be done there to pull into one of those characters, that would be fantastic.